Okay, in this video, um, we're going to now look at how much work can an electrochemical cell do, or how much work would an electrochemical cell need to have done on it. So we're going to be relating work and electrochemical cells. Um, in the last video, we talked about cell potential and spontaneity. So we kind of already know something about work and spontaneous uh, and, and spontaneity. So uh, just to kind of re review, if something is spontaneous, it can do work. And if something is non-spontaneous, um, it needs work done on it. So um, when we have the battery for our cell phone and in the discharge mode, um, it's doing its work, and then when we recharge it, it, we need to have a certain amount of work done on it to get it to go in the reverse direction. So the question becomes, you know, how can we quantify how much work something can do and how much or how much work would we need to do on it to make it go in the reverse direction? And um, if you guys have taken any kind of physics course, you're going to know that power is equal to I times V in an, in a, in a, in an electrical circuit. P is equal to IV. So, for example, you have a 120 volt um, socket in your house, and most of those are either 15 or 20 amp. So you can multiply the voltage times the uh, maximum amperage, which is the current, to get the amount of power that that, that um, socket can produce at its maximum. So electrical work... is equal to the charge times the potential difference. Now, charge, um, charge is related to how many electrons are passed, basically. Um, each electron has its own little discrete charge. And every time we send an electron through an external circuit, that charge is related that that little charge that's flowing through if we add all that up as over a given amount of time that that is going to be the charge inside of our cell so what we can say then is basically um, that the charge which is, has units of coulombs is going to be related to this is going to be proportional to the number of electrons that we pass so we need a relationship there um, for that. So we need something that allows us to relate charge to the number of electrons. And the potential difference, well, this is going to be our cell potential, right? So we know that the, the difference in field between the anode and the cathode is defined by the cell potential, which is the field, um, which is basically the reduction potentials for those two half cells. So the difference between those two reduction potentials is going to be our uh, overall field. So we can st we can we can start to develop an equation based on this. Now, there's one thing we need to have, and that's the relationship between charge and the number of electrons. And that magic number is called Faraday's constant. Um, so this is the relationship between charge and the number of electrons. And you can actually think of this as a unit conversion. because it, it will allow us to go between charge and numbers of electrons. And the magic number is 96,485 coulombs, which is a unit of charge per mole of electron. So uh, coulombs gets the symbol big C, and now we can relate that to a number of electrons. So if we want to write that uh, equation, so the equation for work Is, can be written as follows. W, uh, which is the, uh, the amount of electrical work that can be done, is equal to minus N times Faraday's constant times the cell potential, times E cell, where N is the number of electrons transferred in the reaction. Uh, F is our coulombs per mole of electron, and then E cell is the cell potential. Now, the reason why we have to put a negative here is because we have to orient a direction, meaning we have to give this a direction. So a negative is work that can be done by work that can be done by the cell. So 
So what do I mean by that? Well, if the work is equal to a negative uh, number, then this means that work is being done by the cell on the surroundings, meaning the cell is giving away its work to the surroundings. If W is equal to a positive, then this is work done on the cell by the surroundings. So now let's just look at um, an example where we have the Daniel cell. So let's calculate the work involved for the Daniel cell. So uh, in the Daniel cell, we have, uh, I'm just going to put a little line break here. We have zinc 2 plus plus copper. Oh, I'm sorry. We have, uh, let me just fix that. We have zinc solid plus copper 2 plus. Uh, goes to copper solid plus zinc 2 plus. And we have our balanced half reactions. Uh, zinc goes to zinc 2 plus plus 2 electrons. And copper 2 plus plus 2 electrons goes to copper. So now let's, let's figure out how much work is done in this. So we have work is equal to minus NFE cell. So if you calculate E cell, this is going to equal... Uh, 0 0.76 volts, I'm sorry, 0 0.34 volts minus a negative 0 0.76 volts, we get those from the table, which is going to equal a positive 1.10 volts. So we put that in. And then we have Faraday's constant, which is 96,485 coulombs per mole. And now we have to put in the number of electrons. Well, the number of electrons being transferred um, so for every turnover of this, we're going to get um, two electrons per mole of reagent that's turned over. So the N accounts for that. The N accounts for the number of electrons that are transferred in the overall electrochemical process. So we're going to put in a two for that, um, and we get for the work. So the work that can be done is negative 2.12 times 10 to the fifth joules per mole. Um, so the coulombs times volts gives you units of joules, and then we still have the per mole on the bottom. So that's how you can calculate work uh, for a, a cell. Now let's look at two examples um, in the practice problems where we have to do this um, for, for an electrochemical cell. For lecture problem seven, we're going to calculate how much work can be done by a voltaic cell. Well, we just calculated in the, in the last slide, um, so this is the Daniel cell, which is our copper-zinc uh, case. So we, we calculated the work for this cell already, um, but now what we have to do is we have to look at how can we bring stoichiometry into all of this. So what we just figured out was that the work is equal to minus 2.12 times 10 to the fifth joules per mole. Um, and we calculated that in the in just a second ago in the previous slide. So now the question says, well, if 6.54 grams of zinc metal are oxidized in the presence of excess copper ions, um, how much work can be done by the cell? So now the, the problem here is that we don't have one mole of zinc. We have 6.54 grams only. So we have to figure out, well, okay, now we have to use our work as a unit conversion to get the amount of energy that can be done. So if we only have 6.54 grams, the first thing we have to do is figure out, well, how many moles of zinc is that? So for every uh, 65.39 grams, I get this from the periodic table of zinc, we have one mole. And then we know that if we have one mole of zinc, we can do negative uh, 2.12 times 10 to the minus times 10 to the fifth joules of work. So if as, when you multiply this out, this is going to equal minus uh, 2.12 times 10 to the fourth joules that can be done by that 6.54 grams. So we have to use stoichiometry because this amount of work is depend de is dependent upon the um, the number of moles that are involved in the reaction. So in this one, how much work can be done by a cell comprised of cadmium and cadmium 2 plus and silver and silver plus if one gram of silver is formed? So here we have to go through the process of actually calculating the work. So if you, if you write out the, re the reaction for this cell, um, you're going to get 
the following. You're going to get cadmium. Uh, so cadmium is the anode. So cadmium is going to go to cadmium 2 plus, plus 2 electrons. Uh, silver plus, plus 1 electron gives silver. So we notice that already we, we know how many, uh, how many electrons are going to be transferred. Our N in this case is going to equal 2 because we see that we have uh, the cadmium 2 plus plus 2 electrons. We'd have to multiply the bottom by 2 to get everything to balance. So that's going to give us an N equal to 2 based on the number of electrons that are transferred. And then we have to get the cell potential. So if you look up the reduction potentials, you're going to get that the E cell is equal to uh, 0 0.80 volts minus a negative 0 0.40 volts is equal to positive 1.2 volts. So now we can do our work equation where we have work is going to equal minus 2, which is the number of electrons transferred, times 96,485 coulombs per mole times our cell potential, which is plus 1.20 volts. So for the amount of work we get, that is 2.32 times 10 to the fifth joules per mole of stuff. Now, we have to be careful about what this per mole is. So if we write out the full equation, we get cadmium plus 2 silver plus gives cadmium 2 plus plus two silver solid. Oh, let me just clean that up. Two silver solid. So now the way to think about this is we can actually add this amount of work to our balanced reaction. This reaction, because it's just like delta H, because this is a negative, we can assign this as a product of the reaction because this is work that's going to be done by the system. So we can say that there's going to be also 2.3 times 10 to the 5 joules of work that can be done. And this is going to be linked to the stoichiometry um, of the one cadmium and the two moles of silver. So when we say per mole, we don't necessarily mean by per mole by rote example. We mean that this is related to the stoichiometry of the, the problem. So in this case, there's two moles of silver for every one quantity of work that can be done because of the stoichiometry. So if we work that out, if we take 1.00 gram of silver, uh, that's formed, and we use the uh, molecular weight of silver, which is 107.87 grams for every one mole. Um, and then we say, well, for every two moles of silver, we get m uh, minus 2.32 times 10 to the minus 5 joules. This is going to equal negative 2.15 times 10 to the third joules. So this is going to be the final answer, uh, and just just so you yeah, so you guys see it's minus two point one five times ten to the third joules. So again, what you should recognize is this is this is pretty important. Is that when we write this, we we're writing these this amount of work that's done by the reaction. So it becomes linked just like delta H would to the stoichiometry of that reaction.